The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And we read Psalm 73. Truly, God is loving to Israel, to those who are pure in heart. Nevertheless, my feet were almost gone, my steps were well nigh slipped, for I was envious of the proud. I saw the wicked in such prosperity, for they suffer no pains, and their bodies are sleek and sound. They come to no misfortune like other folk, nor are they plagued as others are. Therefore pride is their necklace, and violence wraps them like a cloak. Their iniquity comes from within, the conceits of their hearts overflow. They scoff and speak only of evil. They talk of oppression from an eye. They set their lips against the heavens, and their tongue ranges round the earth. And so people turn to them, and find in them no fault. They, sh they say, how should God know? Is there knowledge in the Most High? Behold, these are the wicked. Ever at ease, they increase their wealth. Is it in vain that I cleanse my heart, and wash my hands in innocence? All day long I have been stricken and chastened every morning. If I had said I will speak as they do, I should have betrayed the generation of your children. Then thought I to understand this, but it was too hard for me, until I entered the sanctuary of God and understood the end of the wicked, how you have set them in slippery places, you cast them down to destruction, how suddenly do they come to destruction, perish and come to a fearful end. As with a dream when one awakes, so, Lord, when you arise, you will despise their image. When my heart became embittered, I was pierced to the quick. I was but foolish and ignorant. I was like a brute beast in your presence. Yet I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand. You will guide me with your counsel, and afterwards receive me with glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is nothing upon the earth that I desire in comparison with you. Though my flesh and my heart fail me, God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Truly, those who forsake you will perish. You will put to silence the faithless who betray you. But it is good for me to draw near to God. In the Lord God I have made my refuge, that I may tell of all your works. This psalm is a psalm that says, even though the wicked appear to prosper, they will, in the end, come to ruin. Um, but there's this key verse here in verse 7, their iniquity comes from within, linked with verse 13, is it in vain that I cleanse my heart? So here the psalmist acknowledges that it's not the outward actions um, which are key, it is the inner attitude. Outward actions are a result of what's happening inside. So their iniquity comes from within because they've set themselves against God. Meanwhile, I've cleansed my heart. We need to get our heart and our thinking right, and then our actions will follow on automatically from that. Psalm, uh, sorry, Proverbs chapter 1 and verses 20 to the end of the chapter. Wisdom cries out in the street. In the square, she raises her voice. At the busiest corner, she cries out. At the entrance of the city gate, she speaks. How long, O oh simple ones, will you love being simple? How long will scoffers delight in their scoffing, and fools hate knowledge? Give heed to my repro reproof. I will pour out my thoughts to you. I will make my words known to you. Because I have called and you refused, I have stretched out my hand, but no one heeded. And because you ignored all my counsel and would have none of my reproof, I will also laugh at your calamity. I will mock when panic strikes you, when panic strikes you like a storm, and your calamity comes like a whirlwind. When distress and anguish come upon you, then they will call upon me, and I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but will not find me, because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord and would have none of my counsel, and despised all my reproof. Therefore they shall eat the fruit of their way, 
and be sated on their own desires. For, wicked, for waywardness kills the simple, and complacency of fools destroys them. But those who listen to me will be secure, and will live at ease without dread of disaster. Wisdom calls out and says, come and learn. But people turn their back on wisdom. Sometimes it's easy to be lazy and not do the hard work of learning and studying or the hard work of praying and fasting and reading, us, reading the scriptures. And then we wonder why it is that uh, we don't have the tools we need when we face calamity. Here in this passage, wisdom offers people a way out, a way to save themselves, but they don't take it. And then calamity comes up on them. They don't have the tools to deal with it. Let's make sure we receive and take all that God offers us so that we may be fully equipped and ready for the service to which he calls us. We now read from Mark chapter 3, verse 7 to 19. Jesus departed with his disciples to the lake, and a great multitude from Galilee followed him, hearing all that he was doing. They came to him in great numbers from Judah, Jerusalem, Edom, and beyond Jordan, and the region around Tyre and Sidon. He told his disciples to have a boat ready for him because of the crowd, so they would not crush him, for he had cured many, so that all who had diseases pressed upon him to touch him. Whenever the unclean spirits saw him, they fell down before him and shouted, You are the Son of God! But he sternly ordered them not to make him known. He went up the mountain and called to him those whom he wanted, and they came to him. And he appointed twelve, whom he also named apostles, to be with him, and sent them out to proclaim the message, and to have authority to cast out demons. So he appointed the twelve, Simon, to whom he gave the name Peter, James, son of Zebedee, and John, the brother of James, to whom he gave the name uh, Sons of Thunder, and Andrew and Philip, and Bartholomew and Matthew and Thomas, James the son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, and Simon the Canaan, and Judas Iscariot, who later betrayed him. Jesus called his, out his twelve disciples, called out his twelve apostles, and gave them authority to proclaim the message and to cast out demons. God has called us to proclaim his message and given us authority over all the power of the enemy. Let's make sure we receive that commission and we go out and we speak for the Lord today. Lord, we lift up to you. Um, we continue to lift up to you our sister Deborah. And Lord, we pray for her. We pray for your healing touch. We pray for strength and comfort for her family. Especially, Lord, we pray for our children, that, Lord, they may be comforted in what must be a very, very worrying time for them. Lord, we pray for the doctors and nurses who have care of her. And, Lord, we pray that you will give them wisdom. Lord, we thank you for the care that she's receiving. And uh, pray, Lord, that soon you will restore her to a full measure of health and strength. Let your merciful ears, O Lord, be open to the prayers of your humble servants, and that they may obtain their petitions, make them to ask such things as shall please you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen.